Hello and welcome to the Aaron Schwartz channel. This is going to be a little different. I'm going to read Psalm 105. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell all of his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he has uttered, of the offspring of Abraham, his servant, the children of Jacob, the chosen ones. He is the Lord of our God. He is the judgment in all the earth. He is remembered for his covenant forever, the word that he commanded for thousands of generations, the covenant that he made with Abraham. He swore promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statute to Israel in an everlasting covenant, saying, to you I will give the land of Canaan and your portion for an inheritance, when they were few in number, of little account, and the sojourners in it, wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people, he allowed no one to oppress them. He rebuked kings on their account, saying, Touch not my anointed ones, and do my prophets no harm. When he summoned a famine on the land and broke all the supply of bread, he had sent a man ahead of them. Joseph, who was sold as a slave, his feet were hurt with fetters, his neck was put in a collar of, of, a collar of iron, and until he had what he had said came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him to the ruler of the people set him free. He made him the lord of his house and the rulers of all his possessions to bind his princes at his pleasure and to teach his elders wisdom. Then Israel came to Egypt. Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham and the Lord made his people very faithful and made them stronger in their foes. He turned their hearts to hate his people to deal craftily with his servant. He sent Moses his servant and Aaron whom he had chosen. They performed his signs amongst and miracles in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made the land dark and they did not not rebel against his word. He turned their waters into blood and caused their fish to die. Their land swarmed with frogs, even in the chamber of their kings. He spoke and there came swarms of flies and gnats throughout their country. He gave them hail for rain and the fiery lightning bolts through their land. He struck down their vines and fig trees and shattered the trees of the country. He spoke and the locusts came, young locusts without number, which devoured all the vegetation of the land and ate up the fruit of the ground. He struck down the firstborn in the land and the firstborn of all their strength. Then he brought out of Israel silver and gold, and there was none among his tribes who stumbled. Egypt was glad when they departed, for dread of them had fallen upon it. He spread a cloud for covering and a fire to give light by night. They asked, and he brought quail, and he gave them bread from heaven in abundance. He opened the rock, and the waters gushed out and flowed through it, the desert like a river. He remembered his holy promise in Abraham, his servant. So he brought his people out with joy and his chosen ones with singing, and he gave them the lands of the nation and they took possession of the fruit of the people's toil that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Praise to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. This is Psalm 106. Praise to the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Who can utter mighty deeds of the Lord and declare all his praises? Blessed are they who observe justice and do righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, when you show favor to your people. Help me when you save them, that I might be looked upon with prosperity of your chosen one, that I might rejoice in the gladness of your nation, that I might glory with your inheritance. Both we and our our fathers have sinned. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedness. Our fathers, when they were in Egypt, did not consider your wondrous works. They did not remember the abundance of your steadfast love, but rebelled by the sea at the Red Sea. Yet, he saved them for his name's sake that he might be known to his mighty power. He rebuked the Red Sea and it became dry and let them through the deep as through a desert. So he saved them from the hand of the foe and redeemed them from the power of the enemy. And the waters covered their adversaries and not one of them was left. Then they believed his words and they sang his praise, but soon forgot his works. They did not wait for his counsel, but they had a wanton craving in the wilderness and put God to the test in the desert. He gave them what they asked, but they sent a wasting disease among but sent a wasting disease among them. When men in the camp were jealous of Moses and Aaron, the Holy One of the Lord, the earth opened and swallowed up Dathan and covered the company of Abram. Fire broke out in their company. The flame burned up the wicked. They made a calf of Horeb and worshiped a metal image. They exchanged, they exchanged the glory of God for the image of an ox that eats grass. They forgot God, their savior, who had done great things in Egypt, wondrous works in the land of Ham and awesome deeds by the Red Sea. Therefore, he said he would destroy them 
them had not Moses' his chosen one stood in the breach before them to turn away his wrath from destroying. Then they despised the pleasant land, having no faith in his promise. They murmured in their tents and did not obey the voice of the Lord. Therefore he raised his hand and swore to them that he would make the fall, make them fall in the wilderness and would make their offspring fall among the nations, scattering them amongst the lands. They that yoked themselves in the bow of the pure and ate sacrifices offered to the dead, they provoked the Lord to anger with their deeds and a plague broke out among them. Then Phineas stood up and intervened and the plague was stayed and that was counted to him as righteousness for generation to generation forever. They angered at the waters of Merib and went to the ill with Moses on their account, for they made his spirit bitter, and he spoke rashly with his lips. They did not destroy the peoples as the Lord commanded them, but they mixed with the nations and learned to do so as they did. They served their idols, which became a snare to them. They sacrificed their sons and daughters to demons and poured innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. They became unclean by their acts and played the whore in their deeds. The anger of the Lord was kindled against his people, and he abhorred his heritage. He gave to them the hand of the nation so that who hated them ruled over them. Their enemy oppressed them and they were brought into subjection under the power. Many times he delivered them, but they were rebellious in their purpose and were brought low with their iniquity. Nevertheless, he looked upon their distress for when he heard their cry, for the sake he remembered his covenant and re relented according to the abundance of his steadfast love. He caused them to be pitied by all of those who held them captive. Save us, O Lord God, and gather us among the nations that we might give thanks to your holy name and glory to your praise. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. And let all the people say, Amen, or praise the Lord. The Psalms are an interesting mix of different praises of God and curses amongst evil men. But I want to say this. I wrote a blog posting, priusblack.blogspot.com, because I was listening to local radio station 12 40 a.m. this morning. And Lars Larson's uh, scientist, uh, climate expert who does climate modeling was saying that global warming and climate change and 37 tons or trillion tons of CO2 emissions don't do anything cause the climate to change. But I want you to recognize something. God repeatedly in the Bible describes people who pollute the earth to the detriment of others as evildoers who will be cursed. And what do we have today? But when a hydrocarbon is burned in the atmosphere made of nitrogen and oxygen with a little bit of argon and other trace gases, the combustion is always incomplete. And some of the contaminants in the fuel, namely nitrogen from the air and sulfur from the fuel form nitrous oxides or oxides of nitrogen or NOx and oxides of sulfur or SOx. Well, what happens when oxides of nitrogen and oxides of sulfur mix with atmospheric water is it forms acid rain. What does acid rain do? It makes lakes and streams acidic, but it also does it to the ocean and other bodies of water. That causes algal blooms that remove the oxygen from the water that kills the fish, which are commercially important. Marine fish Fishing provides 6% of all protein that people eat and happens to be particularly high in DHA and EPA, which are like fertilizer for your brain in terms of healthy fats. This is why people that live in a high um, young fish eating society like Japan have an unusually high abundance of academically super intelligent people who were able to collaborate to create the economic miracle from 1960 until 1994 that can converted Japan from a nascent in an, um, like poor country into a global powerhouse of export with companies like Toyota dominating the automotive space worldwide. All right, well, polluters. When the automobile manufacturers put a catalytic converter in the exhaust, what's happening inside the hot catalyst, because it's in the hot exhaust, is the catalytic noble metals have stable valence electrons. And what this enables is participatory temporary bonding. So when a pollutant hits the platinum or rhodium atom that's stabilized on the ceramic in the catalytic converter, those noble metal atoms help to loan an electron to break the pollutant, like an oxide of nitrogen, into nitrogen and oxygen gas, which are non-toxic. So the toxic 
oxygen or nitro oxide of nitrogen nox becomes non-toxic nitrogen and non-toxic oxygen which are normal components of the atmosphere therefore a catalytic converter converts toxic exhaust gas components into non-toxic atmospheric gases the catalytic converter also catalytically decomposes unburned hydrocarbon vapor, which is a neurotoxin, kidney toxin, and liver toxin, and converts it to CO2, water vapor, and a little bit of carbon monoxide. But what I'm getting at is that catalytic converters reduce the poisonous aspects of engine exhaust gases by 95%. In engineering, any kind of 95% improvement is considered radical innovation. If you can make a vehicle 5% more efficient, that's considered extraordinary in terms of fuel economy. Imagine if you gave yourself a 95% raise in income, how much that would improve your life or your ability to pay for housing, food, fuel, and travel, and clothing, and other goods, computers, and things. It's not one thing because money is a fourth order derivative of net energy. You know what everyone needs is food calorie energy, fuel energy, or electricity. That's what enables modern economies to work. Without energy, you have nothing. Without energy, your body will die. Without energy fuel, your vehicle cannot drive. Without electricity, you can't charge a battery electric vehicle or your cell phone, run an oven or a microwave or a refrigerator. Without electricity, the internet is not possible. Electricity is the most important thing in a modern economy. The hospital can't work without electricity. The internet can't work without electricity. The appliances in your home can't work with electricity. The engine in your car can't even work without electricity. That's why it has an alternator, which is a generator. The battery just gets the engine going. Once the engine's spinning, the alternator makes all the electricity to recharge the battery and run the fuel injection computer and the ECU and the vehicle stability control and the ADAS and all the other electronics and chipsets that are in a modern automobile. Electricity in gasoline and diesel cars is just as important as it is in a battery electric car or the cell phone or computer that you're watching this on. When I refer to the Bible and I'm reading God's word, he gives edifying advice as to personal moral conduct at the individual level with precise instructions so unambiguous that it's repeated hundreds of times chapter after chapter to make sure that even the most skeptical ardent person if they actually take the time to read this can make exactly clear intelligible sense of what he's saying and it's translated into many languages so that there's no ambiguity amongst any nations. God's word encourages people to be patient, kind, loving, polite, fair, reasonable, decent, honest, generous, kind, benevolent, loving, and genuinely, sincerely loving, not superficial. He encourages people to understand that if you go out and make a bunch of money and hoard a giant pile of gold, you will still get old and die, and that pile of gold will wither, as in others will raid from it and take it. So there's no point in hoarding money like a billionaire. You know, George Westinghouse, the billionaire industrialist who made natural gas systems in America, also pioneered the idea and implemented the idea of giving people a Saturday and Sunday off of work, paid work benefits like health insurance, company housing. He pioneered many of the egalitarian social reforms for the public good, just like reducing pollution is for the public good. It's also good for the environment and animals and ecosystems. So when Lars Larson and these other conservatives are saying, oh, the political global warming conspiracy, CO2 net exchange, CO2 offset, this is a huge thing to the economy. They're forgetting the main point. Combustion produces pollution that makes poisonous substances that sicken people with preventable diseases, robbing them of life, making them painful and making them suffer and, make, and taking their relatives from them prematurely. That means pollution is evil 
and driven by greed and idolatry that is placing money and material goods and wealth above the wellness of other people and worshiping money more than you worship God. The whole point of calling your heart and mind into the obedience as to the word as did Christ Jesus is so that you stop engaging in stupid, foolish, self-idolatry, narcissism, and you stop hurting other people and you stop hating yourself. You start to have a platonic concern for your grandchildren and for other people's children. You start doing random acts of kindness, community service. You start being generous. You start trying to help other people. You start trying to be a decent human being who makes the world a better place than when you entered it. The word redeems people. Unambiguously true. Everyone who who reads the word of God and does what it says becomes a better, higher quality, higher functioning person who makes the world a better place by doing exactly what God tells them to in this word, namely in Ephesians and Romans. And if you don't believe me, I'm challenging you right now. Go grab a Bible and read the chapter of Ephesians in the New Testament and the chapter of Romans. And then leave me a comment and tell me that what I just said was factually inaccurate. Because this is a philosophy book. This is to change your mindset and your outlook. This is not a science textbook. This does not tell you how physical phenomena in the world work. This is not empirical research or science. This has nothing to do with science. Science. I'm a scientist by training in college, okay? To start with, the scientific method is an experimental design where you isolate a variable, you design an experiment, and then you conduct the experiment, you collect the data, you do statistical analytics, and you're trying to isolate the variable of interest to rule out your bias as a person. That's what science does. Science explains how phenomena in the world work. It doesn't tell you where we came from or what happens after we die. Moreover, science will not redeem your character as a person or increase your integrity as a person to do the right thing when no one else is watching. Most of the time, someone else isn't watching and that's where criminals act. That's where crime happens. That's where corruption, bribery, sleaze and evil and it's people doing the evil to others people because they're not obeying God's word. That is unambiguously true. No argument. If everyone was doing what God said in the Bible, we would live in a wealthy utopia where every human being would be upper middle class. We would have clean, renewable plus nuclear electricity. There would be almost no pollution. The environment would be healthier. The air quality would be better. Everything would be improved in all ways, in all domains, in every country around the world if people simply did what God instructs and told them unambiguously clearly in the Bible, 